you know, vlogging in van with sun coming through. You know, I've been complaining because weather's rubbish, and now we've got some sun, and I'm complaining about the sun. But I've put the blind up. Does that? I've got a big bit on my bald patch. Oh. It's just not professional, is it? I need to get out of this sun. What's a man to do? What about that? Is that better? I've not got the uh, sun on my bald patch. I remember when I were at school, we were out mischievous, I was like at school, and we were in, uh, were it, it was geography, and we had a teacher, were it geography? Mr. Kenyon, bless him, and he was lovely, and he had a bald head, and uh, my mate was sat outside of me, sun was coming through the window, and he realised that when sun was shining off his watch, he could angle it, and shiny top blackboard. So his teacher's got his back to us and he's writing on blackboard. My mate's uh, shining, reflecting the sun on his bald bit on his head. And uh, he thought it was funny, teacher. He says, uh, to whoever is reflecting the, the sun onto my bald <laughs> spot, can you please, I'll always remember that, please stop now. So it's a bit like that, with sun coming into my bald bit. Anyway, y'all all right? People say, what's the G stand for in your hat? It's because I'm top G, innit? Whatever that is. What's the top G? Uh, it's what young ones go. Now I'm a hillbilly, how you doing? Anyway. Oh, sun's going in. Hey up. Are you alright? Do you know what? It's exactly a year since i moved into this tiny van full time and it's come up on my phone this morning i thought oh, i need to do a little video about that and just tell people how it's going and what's happened and stuff like that and do the truth you need to know the truth but can i just say if you're not subscribed to my channel get get subscribing because then you'll it's free and you'll not miss anything and do notifications and all that and if you do thumbs up, like, like and subscribe, all that, please. I never normally ask, but I want to get to 40,000 subscribers. So it's been a great journey. And, uh, yeah, so why did I move into this van full time? Because a lot of sort of new people that start watching my channel, and I get a bit of snidey comments, which I want to address in this as well. I moved into my van because I was 50 years old and I was working every hour and all my money were going on to my extortionate rent, council tax. I don't need to tell you, you know how expensive everything is to live. And it was going on all my bills. And I'd, I was thinking about my life and I thought, well, I've not had that much experiences. I've had, you know, a few like, but I thought I want to live my life. And it's like that midlife crisis. So... My landlord contacted me and they wanted to put my rent up again and I just sort of reacted. I, I said, I'm moving out. I just give me notice because I were on a, a flexible thing because I've been there for years. I said, I'm moving out. And uh, then everyone says to me, well, what are you going to do? I said, I'll live in my van. And I converted this van really badly. <laughs> I did it in like two weeks with just bits of wood and stuff. It was really, it was a right bodge job. But I've been living in it a year now and that's another thing i want to say because you do get some sarcastic oh you're not living in van all the time so let's get this straight okay i do stay at helen's occasionally if you don't know helen's my partner and she lives in sheffield and i do stay there people that know us realize they'll say well, why don't you just live with her full time and it's quite a complex situation uh, with regards to Helen's children, and it's not my place to discuss. There's nothing sinister or weird about it, and if you knew, you'd, you'd completely understand. But I stay with Helen probably once a week, maybe even a little bit less than that. And sometimes I stay... My mum and dad have got a caravan at Bridlington, and I stay there sometimes. When I've got my daughter, especially in winter, we like to go to the caravan because it's nice and cosy, and we like to spend a bit of time in bread. And then... We go on holiday as well, me and Ellen. We go on trips and stay in hotels. So, yeah. And that seems to get some people's 
back up some people's backs up because they like it's as if they want to watch you suffering oh you didn't stay in the van you're fake i get called fake i'm a fake van lifer i'll tell you what i am not fake at all what, what you see is what you get with me and i'll always be honest about it and that's another thing what people say oh you're supposed to be poor and you're going on holiday again well I've never said I'm poor. Whenever I said I'm poor, I had a bit last year when my business was struggling and I shut it down. But everybody's struggling is different. What you've got to realise is I packed in all, all my house and everything like that. And that freed me up quite a substantial amount of money each month. And that's the money that I use to go on trips. It's simple, really. You know, when people say, how do you afford all these trips? Well, I ain't got a house. I live in a van. So I just want to clear them things up. Uh, it's the best thing I've ever done it genuinely is and I love it but there is some caveats to that and I know that if you've got kids and everything I mean I've got kids but my kids are not with me full time if you've got kids with you full time you can't really do this I know some people do and I'm not sure it's the right thing to do when you've got children but you know so I know not everybody could, could do this and with all due respect as well I think it's harder for a lady to do it as well because it can be a bit scary sometimes not all the time I mean I don't really get scared anymore I did it first but should, I should imagine like a, a lady <laughs> do you know what I mean being on, on some dark industrial estate or something in the back of your van on your own I can imagine that can be quite intimidating so yeah so I just want to get them caveats out of the way and it is the best thing I've done because the number one thing is it's freed up loads of money and let me live my life and experience things especially with my daughter i mean me and helen go on quite a few trips as much as we can and with my daughter you know we have a wonderful time that's another thing i had a couple of people like don't you ever take your daughter away yeah i take my daughter away all the time but i don't put it on youtube people think when they see you on youtube they think that's it oh you drink loads of alcohol well we have a drink when we're on a video which is once maybe twice a week rest of the time we don't drink stuff like that you know you got i've got a life outside of youtube as well so what's the good things and the bad things about living in a little van I'll tell you what, it just becomes the norm. You know when you go on holiday and you sat there on beach at Tenerife or whatever and you think, I could live here. And you fantasise about packing up and going living somewhere like that. And I know some people do it, but it's not the same. When you're there full time, when it's your full time thing, it's not an holiday. And it's like with van life, if people go on an odd trip on a weekend and they get into it and they think we'll do this full time it is a bit different it's a bit more it's hard to explain it's like a feeling that you get inside you feel you feel homeless you feel like you don't belong you know this is your this is your life here that's a, one of the downsides about it uh, another downside for me personally is I'm having wonderful adventures with my daughter but I think, you know, when she's older, when she's a young woman, is she going to look back and think, oh, my dad lived in a van? It's got a stigma. You know, I will probably buy a house with Helen at some point, but I'm not in any rush. Neither of us are in any rush. We like the situation as it is. But maybe the next couple of years we might buy a house. But I don't want my daughter to remember these, this part of her childhood. Hopefully she'll look back and think, oh, what an adventure. And she does love the van life thing, but it, it does... It does worry me a little bit, that. I don't care what other people think. I finished caring about that a long time ago. At first I did. I'll tell you what, when I was telling my mates, you know, when you have mates that you've not seen for a while, and they're like, oh, what are you up to? I didn't want to tell them that I live in a van because you feel like a hillbilly or something. Um, I'll always volunteer. I tell everybody, now nah, me. People that don't even want to know. I go in the pub, I live in a van, don't you know? <laughs> and people are usually interested by it because it's a lot more acceptable now, isn't it? So, I'll tell you another downside about it. Because it's not all smashed avocado and thongs. You know, like you see on Instagram. And yoga. Doing vegan yoga and all that stuff. I mean, that might be some people's reality, but to me, that's not proper van life. Uh, it's all staged, isn't it, for internet. 
What, what other, yeah, uh, uh, this is truth. It bloody ages you. When I look at my videos from a year ago, I've aged a load. And I'll tell you what it is, around my eyes. Oh, do you know what? Because you don't get a proper night's sleep. I do occasionally, I'll have a great night, but what'll happen is, and it's been particularly bad this past week, you know, with all storms, it's been a nightmare. You can't sleep. And yeah, I've done earplugs and everything. Uh, I find earplugs uh, quite uncomfortable and I have to take them out eventually. What I'll do now is I'll just put big earphones on, like noise cancelling earphones. And But you know when Van's shaking, it really shakes. So you're not getting a good quality sleep and that starts taking its toll on you and it does on me. I'm tired a lot. And that was true at the beginning. And I've got a really comfy bed. It's dead cosy in the back of my van. I don't know, I think it's like you're alert, you're not sleeping properly because you're parked on some street or in some car park or something like that and you're not properly asleep are you? because you've got this like sixth sense that's listening for noises. It's a bit like a, a mother with a, a newborn that's they're never fully asleep of her. Uh, and my van's my little baby, <laughs> I guess. So there is that. What's the other bad sides about it? I can't I can't think of any others. My health, I need to sort my health out. But I don't think that's van life's fault. In fact, it's quite easy to be healthy in van life. I think that's probably YouTube with me going around doing fish and chip reviews and stuff. I need to sort something out with that. Oh, God. And we've got some plans, I'll tell you. Oh, my God. I can't tell you yet what we've got planned, but... It's too late to chicken out. Uh, so your health, it has affected my health a little bit. But the good far outweighs it. That sense of freedom, being able to do what I want to do. I get up when I want to get up. I go to bed when I want to go to bed. I go wherever I want, do what I want. Within reason, obviously, I've got to work around Helen and I've got to work around my daughter and stuff like that and my family. But... The amount of money I've saved, it's fantastic. My only outgoings now, I've got food, diesel, and, you know, just, like, a few subscriptions, like music and TV, stuff like that, and a bit of internet. Uh, I've got my unit, and uh, I store quite a bit of stuff in my unit. That's handy. I'd recommend just getting a storage unit. If you're doing... Because if you're moving out of your house and going into van life full-time, you've got all your stuff. And you've got to find somewhere to store it. And some places will let you have your mail diverted there. So that's always a good thing. So there we are. One year in. It's been great. I'm sorry I don't seem more enthusiastic. I'm just knackered. But I'll put a little montage of some of the highs and lows. And uh, would I recommend it? Well, you've got to give it some thought, haven't you? But tell you what it feels like as more and more people do van life the powers that be they don't like it so it's like car parks more and more car parks are fitting barriers and all sorts of stuff they just it's not it's not on and they're like people that are minding their own business i know they their argument might be oh it's an iso some vans and stuff but you know it's not worst thing it will is it people parked up in a van and where you've got to look at it you imagine like on a, so there's a business centre or something like that, and there's a car park, and they've cottoned on to this in parts of Europe. So at night time, when it's all closed down, if you've got people there, it's like security, isn't it? I thought I could do that. I thought I could speak to some businesses and find a really good few park-ups and say, look, let me stay in car park, you know, like a really secure car park. Let me stay here. And uh, I'll keep an eye on business for you when I'm here. So it's like a win-win, isn't it? I've got a secure park up and... And they've got their security. But you do you do eventually have your places. And at the beginning I did give away a few of my places and now they've become quite popular. <laughs> you know, when people have seen videos and stuff and asked me and then they've passed it on. And I've had a few places where I, which I loved and I don't really go there anymore because there's quite a few van lifers there. I'm not saying that's because of me, but you don't know, do you? But I have got a, 
a couple of people have said, oh, what, what, where, where do you sleep and that, and what's your spots? And I'm reluctant to say, and it's, I'm not being horrible or all like that, but I don't want loads of hands turning up here because it's my secret spot. But having said that, I'll stay just about anywhere, and that's come after a year, that's just my confidence. I'll never sleep outside somebody's house or anything, but I will... If there's a street, like in a residential area, and there's a bit of a park or a play area, I'll always sort of park there or something. Uh, and I like places like that. Because nobody knows that I'm inside back at van. I'm very, very stealthy. My biggest concern is what's going to be the traffic noise. And then we're getting back to sleeping again. So there we are. I'm a, a year in to this journey. I, I want to thank you all for coming on this journey with me. And I know... It's not just van life. I never said my channel was going to be van life. It's the fact that doing van life has freed up funds so that I can do all my travel stuff, and that's what I truly love doing. So I know it gets some people's backs up. Oh, you're going on holiday again. Well, like I said, I don't have house. So what you're paying in rent? I mean, my rent was 900 and something pound. So what, what, you know, that's a trip. If you do a frugal trip, that's a trip, isn't it? And you think about that every month, plus your council tax, your gas and electricity, water, all that. It's, I could go away every month and be paying the same sort of money. And that's what I'm enjoying doing. I'm just living my life. Because you've only got one, haven't you? And I've made such fantastic memories. We said, me and Ellen, 2023 were going to be fantastic. And it really was. It was amazing. And we just want it to keep getting better and better. So hopefully we'll have loads more trips. And that's all partly because I live in a van. So, yeah, go for it. I'm going to put on uh, a few clips or whatever, what I can find. It was just a little upload, this. just I wanted to do a talky thing because I've not really done a talky thing for ages. I hope I'm, it makes sense because I don't plan it. I don't script anything. It just comes off the top of my head. So it's com probably complete waffle. But it don't matter. Make sure you subscribe, though. I want to get to 40,000 subscribers. My target was before my daughter's birthday, which is halfway mid-February. So I want to get to 40,000 before then. Is it possible? Spread the word. All right, I'll show you some clips now. See you there. That's it, keys are gone. Goodbye suburbia. Suburbia. Goodbye suburbia. And open road and no bills and van life for me. And I'm very excited. This is the happiest you're ever gonna see me. And I'm still about 80% miserable, but there you go. I've added this uh, deep shelf on the back door there. And I've I can hang my bin there and I've got this mirror That's got, I'm going to screw some things so I can hang that on there when I want to shave but I'll have to open the door and do it outside oh. God. What's that saying? If the vans are rocking, don't come knocking Well, my van were rocking all bloody night not for good reasons, though. it was wind doing my head in the right gale last night. I'm not feeling it this morning. I'll have to have a nap at some point today. I need my sleep, that's the thing. Okay, so that's coming along nicely. I want to have some of this. It's a bit like a Cajun spice. Really gives it a kick.
So there's Poirot smelling my dinner. And I think you you will all agree that I've done far too much there. <laughs> but hey, I'm looking forward to this. This has to be the most common question I get asked. How do you keep clean? Well, I get a wash. It's not hard, it's just not a problem at all. I answered this on one of my earlier videos when I was uh, getting a washing back at van with a bowl and some flannels, as Helen calls it, a tarts wash, or as more politically correct people call it, a trucker's wash. But I'm also a member of uh, JD Gyms and I pay 20 quid a month. Uh, and I go there and they've got sauna, showers and the beauty of that and it's really nice it's nice facilities the beauty of that is you get you have a workout as well however the first thing I need to do is have a wee in my quality luxury wee receptacle I think I might spare you the uh, the ordeal of having to watch this just boiling a bit of water for uh, a cup of coffee and a porridge that's the state of the van they're the stickers what my daughter's been doing for me <laughs> She loves doing that. Yay! <laughs> I shall. <laughs> you can't pull that yeah. on, can you? You can't show that, no. <sighs> Go on, don't. This is a family channel, Helen. <laughs> this is right with it, isn't it? I can't even see us. Can you see us? I don't know. None of this is going to make it to the... But it's our little adventure, isn't it, baby? And we're having fun. Yeah, we're having fun. We're in, we're in Hathersage in a car yeah. park across from a pub. Yeah. And that pub was pretty rubbish. It was. It was really disappointing. It was like going in a cafe. Do you know the best bit about that pub? Coming out. It's a bit like one of them Instagram posts, isn't it? I need a bikini on. You just need a bikini on. Right, you need to move out of the way. Oh, thanks. The view's normally of some sort of uh, tropical beach, not some uh, bald bloke. Look what I've got you. <laughs> there you go, madam. Thank you. One sexy nice. flip flop. Thank you. I went to a co op the other day, and it's like a right little co op, and there's three normal spots and one disabled and all normal spots were full but the disabled one were empty and i thought i can't park in disabled it's not fair so i parked around the corner and walked it in and some guy in a range rover pulls in i felt like saying i could have parked there mate i'm not an idiot i mean he were a massive bloke so obviously i didn't say out to him but i thought it in my head Lovely cold air. It's it smells like camping. That's my armpits, love. <laughs> <laughs> People's asleep. I don't really know how many you put in. Oh. Three. I'll put four in. Thank you. That is impressive, darling. Mmm. Mmm. Jump brown sauce. Yeah, please. Oh. And thank you to the people that recommended this place to stay, but I didn't realise you were millionaires. <laughs> I can't afford that sort of price. I live in a chuffing van, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Are you laughing at it? Oh, he, yeah. He's just... I feel bad inside. It's oh, hurt me. Don't. Don't let it make you feel bad. 
Right, you but just the, need to just... The thing is, right, there's draw people... Draw a line under that we've got and a, let's move on. We've got a cost of living crisis. Yeah. You know, and... Not round here. Obviously, well, what cost of living crisis? Because that pub were round. They've all got big watches on. Big it was one of them places. You know where all houses, it's like a new village and all houses look identical. They're all exactly the same. We absolutely no soul whatsoever. They all have the same cars. Car parks full of Range Rovers and Land Rovers and, you know, I'm not jealous. <laughs> uh, where are you in orphan van? <laughs> Parked in between. There's, there's a Land Rover there and a Range Rover there. <laughs> and we're in a shitty 2014 Peugeot Expert sleeping in it. Mm -hmm. 